Hi guys, it's Adam Panisi from Liberty Blue here. In this video, I just wanted to talk about structuring for property developers and what types of structures are available and what are typically used. Um, I help property developers and other aspiring property developers to with strategies and tips and tricks on how to become a property developer or just invest in property with a bit more knowledge and at that higher level. I've completed a couple of hundred million dollars worth of my own developments and just want to pass on some of that education and my learnings over the last 12 years in the industry to people and hopefully save you a lot of money and hopefully not make the same mistakes that I have. So just on the structure side of things, one thing that I had very early on in the piece were accountants telling me that I had to set up a new structure for every single development that I did. So that's all well and good, and I think that that is great advice. Um, however, when you're just starting, and when I first started, I was only 22, I didn't have a huge amount of money, and setting up all these structures was actually extremely costly. And not just the setup, but then you've got the ongoing maintenance of that. And by structure, I mean company and trust type structures. So I can remember for my first ever deal, I had an accountant that was referred to me um, by one of my mentors at the time. This accountant, um, no discredit to him, but stuffed a few things up quite royally. Not only did he do that with setting up the structures, uh, but he also charged me a hell of a lot of money. So in the early days, uh, on my first project, we made some money, it was a small project, $3 million end value, five houses and townhouses, but really at the end of it, the structure that was set up and the maintenance of that structure was not warranted. So the accounting, well, the accountants made all of their fees uh, and they charged a fortune. They made really good money out of, out of it, but really when it came and boiled down to it, what was set up was way over the top for what I needed, especially at that time doing my first development. Um, so anyway, it's good to listen to advice. I think it's great to go and get a second opinion. And what I've found having now been through six accountants, they're not all the same, but a lot of them, especially the top tier accountants, they'll charge you four or $500 an hour for one of the partners or their advice. And a lot of the times, the junior will do the work um, and in my experience a lot of the time they set up a structure and they completely stuff it up so it's great to get second opinions especially if you're if you don't have a huge amount of knowledge around the structuring um, so not only should you get multiple opinions you should actually educate yourself on how the structures work and you don't have to be a complete expert but just know uh, what like what the structure entails and just get an understanding and I find the best way is to do that visually ask your accountant to draw a visual diagram and not just a hand-drawn one they normally have systems uh, where they can produce a, a flow chart um, or flow type, flow chart type arrangement where they show the company and trust and the shareholders of that um, so the typical or most typical setup for a property developer is to do a each property development in a company. So that's more, more established property developments or larger developments. If you're doing like say a single renovation, and I, I class a renovation as a property development, it's just a, a smaller scale. Um, if you're doing a single renovation or buying a single house, if it's your first one or if it's your second one, you may be able to just do it in your individual name. It's going to be a lot cheaper. You'll save yourself a huge amount on accounting costs, both setup and then also the ongoing maintenance of that. Um, and a lot of the time, depending on whether you want to keep or, or sell that asset, a lot of the times it's cheaper to do it in your own name. And I'm talking about for most people um, and most people on a smaller scale. Once you start getting into the bigger scale projects, then yes, it it is more beneficial to set up uh, a particular structure for each deal that you do um, and then that helps with tax benefits and things like that but there's a huge amount of cost that's involved um, not only with the setup but then also 
every year you've got to do your financials um, and then there's all the asset compliance on top of that. So accountants love property developers because we set up multiple entities and all of those fees are recurring for accountants to do the bookwork. Um, so yeah, when you're first getting started, just weigh up whether or not it's worth doing it either in your own name or whether it's worth setting up a company or company and trust. Uh, there's other considerations to that as well. Uh, if there's multiple parties involved, you can still do it in, in your individual names. Um, if you're both on title, you can be tenants in common or what's called tenants in common, where you both on title and you can own whatever the split is, 50-50, 60-40, whatever that may be. Um, another way to do that is to come in via shareholding in a company um, and then that company purchases a property or you may want to do it in a trust structure. So there's really, from my experience, there's really only three ways to purchase or three structures to put a property into. One is individual name, two is company and then three in the trust. So those are the three main types. I know people can overcomplicate it with the various structures and things, but if you just keep it simple, individual name, company, or trust, that's it. Um, so yeah, just think about those three structures. Each of them have advantages and disadvantages, and you just need to discuss that with your accountant um, about what are the best tax advantages. Now, I'm only just talking about tax advantages. There's other considerations as well. Um, but for most people, it's normally the tax advantage um, as to why they put it into each structure. So once you start getting into bigger developments um, and there's different things involved, so there may be multiple parties or investment parties or investor parties rather, um, then there's other considerations that need to be taken into account. Um, and a lot of accountants will bang on about um, keeping everything separate to limit liability. Uh, that's true, I definitely agree with that. Um, but for the better part, you just need to weigh up what that liability actually is, as in, for your own circumstance, um, you know, what, what are you risking, what risks are you willing to take, and then it also comes back, I believe, to what is the property and what's the risk of something happening after the fact. Um, and, that, and that is generally, uh, to my knowledge, when you finish a property development, you shut that entity down and then there's no other liabilities that are associated with that entity. If you're doing a single cosmetic renovation, for example, um, and you're just on selling the property and it's just you involved, or even if you've got another party, um, you know, you might be able to do it in your own personal name. Uh, if you, you will then obviously cop the income tax on profits that you make. Um, but sometimes it works out to be more beneficial doing it in your own name than trying to set up other structures. Not always, but in my early days, I wish I had have done a few things in, in my individual name. It would have saved me a huge amount in accounting fees and those savings would have more than offset the amount of tax I paid. That was very early on in the piece. I'm talking about definitely not now, but when I did my first couple of deals. So I know for most people watching this, or hopefully for most people watching this, you're looking to get into property development and you might be looking at your first or second deal. Uh, if you're watching this and you've already done some deals, you might have some knowledge about this already. Um, and you might all also have the structures available and set up already. So just for people that have done development previously, uh, you may be familiar or may be aware that your legal advisor, your, your solicitor, and this particular law, uh, or sorry, particular tax lawyers, that help with setting up structures as well. So there's something that's called legal privilege uh, when a lawyer sets up an, an entire tax structure, uh, it's legal privilege, which means that uh, anyone investigating, whether it's the ATO, obviously can't get access to that information and the structure set up. So that's like the next step further. Once you're getting um, into bigger projects, if you've been doing it for a while, you can justify, one, the cost of setting it up, uh, especially when you start to involve 
tax lawyers, five, six hundred dollars an hour, and they'll be setting up or at least advising you on the best setup um, to do to, for your entire structure. The other consideration is, are you doing this as a once-off um, or is it a continual operation? So normally if it's continual, then you know those costs are spread over a number of years. So it makes the whole setup worthwhile. So hopefully you've gained some info and insight into this and when you're setting up your structure to either buy an investment property or do your first development or renovation, uh, I just advise just go and get a second opinion and just weigh up the pros and cons of each structure that you're looking at. And each, each structure obviously has different pros and cons and you just need to make sure that your situation um, is or the structure advised to you is best for your situation. Thanks for listening and hopefully you've gained some insight into all of those things. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.